I'd like to demonstrate my method for making movies using two of the programs, Windows Movie Maker and Photo Story 3 for Windows, both Microsoft programs. Windows Movie Maker is included with XP and Vista. With Windows 7, you have to download a version of it. And Microsoft Photo Story 3 for Windows is a separate download, and it works with Windows XP. It gives you that Ken Burns effect the panning and zooming throughout the slide. I like to edit my pictures carefully and show only the best ones using some of the others only to complete the storytelling process. And I like to use a graphics editor to try to improve the quality of the picture and edit out anything that doesn't really contribute to it. I use the cloning tool to get rid of things like phone poles and telephone wires and the saturation and the contrast just to try to make it a more pleasing presentation. After I'm finished with my picture editing I open up Photo Story 3 for Windows. It's a good program for creating motion effects where you can pan and zoom throughout each slide. I guess that's what's known as the Ken Burns effect. And Photo Story is a great program for achieving that. After you open Photo Story 3, the first thing is to import the pictures where you can start fine tuning all the motion effects. After a few steps where you're given the chance to add voiceovers and captions, you'll get to the important part where you can start customizing the motion of your slide. In order to control exactly how you'll want your slide to appear, you have to check the box specify start and end position and then drag a rectangle around the portions of the picture from which you want to pan and zoom. As you're customizing the movement, you'll be able to preview the motion effect. When you're done adjusting all the zooming and panning and you're satisfied with your pictures, you'll need to save your movie in Photo Story 3 and choose one of the highest settings, which is 640 by 480. The next step now is to open Windows Movie Maker and get ready to start importing all of your media. I like to have a separate directory each for my images, video, and sound files. Now that we have Windows Movie Maker open, we can import all the motion clips that we made with Photo Story previously. Working in timeline view, you can actually see how the soundtrack is going to line up with the video and make fine-tuned adjustments to your slide times and transition times. It's real easy to import all your media into Windows Movie Maker. It recognizes all the popular file types for movies. You've got MPEG, Windows Media, AVI. For sound, you've got WAVE, MP3, and Windows Media and all the popular graphic file types like GIF, JPG, and BMP are recognized. After you get your media imported, now is a good time to adjust your timings and add some captions, even subtitles. All the various transition effects can be added just by dragging them either into storyboard or timeline view and placing them between your pictures. You can see how easily that's done right here. Matching and adjusting the sound of the video length is also done by dragging the handles either way. You can be very precise with the length of the sound and use fade in, fade out, increase or decrease the volume as well. It's really important to remember to save your work as you go, save your project often. It's also lots of fun to add subtitles, captions, and closing credits. You've got lots of choices as what kind of scrolling credits at the end of the movie you want. Also lots of font options and styles are available.
When you're ready to save your movie, choose a high quality format. Video for local playback, the 2.1 megabytes per second is really a good choice. You can also record back to DV tape or make a DVD quality AVI file. 